Hi, this is Mark Vino with Smart Tech Research. I'm with one of my favorite companies that I like to follow. I'm here with Infineon Technologies. I'm with uh, Shivaram, uh, who uh, is responsible for the Wi-Fi group at uh, Infineon. And we've got some very, very exciting stuff to talk about. Uh, from, and before we go into the demos here, what do you do specifically in terms of your engagement in, with the wireless team? Let's talk about that for a second. But I also want to talk a little bit from a, a market standpoint. Like, for example, Wi-Fi 7 has been coming along. It's been out there for a, cu a couple of years. I mean, people, I think most mainstream consumers, understand Wi-Fi 7. They may not understand all the benefits. Um, and by the way, and we're going to talk about this from a capability standpoint, now, especially related to IoT, mm -hmm. uh, there are things that are now possible with Wi-Fi 7 that was not possible not too long ago, and it's important. Those things are very, very important. Yep. And um, I'll remind people that in the average home, most people have 30, 40, 50 devices in their home. Uh, you may not even believe it, but the Wi-Fi connectivity is incredibly important. The latency portion is important, but let's get into exactly your role at the company. Yeah, uh, my name is Shivram. I work for Infineon and I run the wireless product line. That's all our Wi-Fi and Bluetooth products at Infineon. Products that are close to my heart. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. nice to meet you, Mark. Nice to meet you, yeah. nice to meet you. And the interesting about Infineon, and I had this conversation with your president last night, and um, we've done many, many uh, podcasts with you, is that Infineon is probably the premier solutions ingredient company. They have their fingers in many, many products. Yeah. Um, most people don't even realize it. Uh, and uh, wireless connectivity touches everything. You know, um, in IoT, we're gonna talk a little bit about IoT. It's so incredibly important, whether that IoT device is battery powered, whether um, it's in a light sensor, whether it's in some type of, uh, it's in your, um, a smartwatch. I mean, there's a variety of different places that that capability yeah. um, uh, uh, comes to fruition from an, uh, from a from a capability standpoint. But let's get specifically to this uh, capability that we're going to talk about in a moment. Why is it so important? Why sh you should care about it? Yeah. So uh, IoT. If you if you I mean IoT, there are many versions, many embodiments of it. But if you look at the context of a home, a smart home, you met, you alluded to the fact that homes these days have thirty plus Wi-Fi devices. That, might be, that might be a low number. <laughs> might be, I, mean, I have 46, how many do you? I have probably 50. 50, there you 50, go, yeah. right? And we're probably the lead adopters. And what we see is in an average American home today, you have about 30 to 35 devices that's growing. By the turn of the, turn of the decade, we think it'll be over 50 devices. And I can't think of any device in our homes now which won't be positively impacted by having some digital electronics in it and more importantly, connecting it to the internet. Just the other day, I was walking around um, and I saw this um, uh, a pet food dispenser. Imagine something like that too, right? Now it's connected over internet, so you, um, wherever you are, you can control the food dispenser, check yes. how much food your pet is eating and so on. So there's any number of devices at home that could positively be impacted by connecting them to the internet. So the problem is the crowding of these devices. Now, now, now not only do I have 50 devices in my house, my neighbor on has 50 devices. My neighbor on the other side has 50 devices. So there's so many devices operating in close proximity that creates a problem. I mean, and that's only going to get worse as we go on as the number of these devices right. increase. And on, in Wi-Fi, if you look at the general evolution of Wi-Fi, when you start from all the way back from Wi-Fi 1 to, uh, to let's say, Wi-Fi 5, the focus, the accent was on increasing the speed of data transfer, right? Um, and, and that was required at a point of time. But then once we got to Wi-Fi 6, the industry realized there's no point in making the car go any faster if it's going to be stuck in traffic. Yes, all it's the good time. analogy, it's good yeah. analogy. So we, the industry pivoted to focusing on efficiency. How do you make all these devices behave well together and not trample on each other as they're competing for the same airspace? So Wi-Fi 6 made a big step in that, in that direction and Wi-Fi 7 took it even further. Uh, you started out by saying Wi-Fi 7 is not new, that's true, it's been around for two years, but what most people don't realize is the, the benefits of Wi-Fi 7 have largely only impacted devices like smartphones, laptops, uh, VR headsets, very high-end, high data rate intensive applications, but there are a lot of capabilities in Wi-Fi 7 that are broadly applicable to a whole range of 
uh, IoT devices, the devices we are talking about. Mm -hmm. And what's changed recently is the Wi-Fi Alliance now has introduced a new certification program that allows the 20 megahertz devices, that is the, yeah. the, the, the devices that don't care about a lot of data rate but need reliable connectivity. They need to be connected robustly all the time. Those type of devices can also now be certified as Wi-Fi 7 devices. And, and that was not possible until recently. Uh, so that's a big step in the right direction. Infineon championed that effort, working closely with Wi-Fi Alliance and other partners in the ecosystem. And I'm super excited to see that the benefits of Wi-Fi 7 will now finally reach a broad range of IoT devices. Right. And, and again, going back to the whole benefits of Wi-Fi 7, and the market is slowly moving toward embracing. And it takes... It takes a lot of time. You know, how many, how, how many years were we on? I'm going to update myself. Uh, Wi-Fi, B, uh, 802.11B. 802 yeah. And then we had N, and then we had G. Was it G or N before? G and N. You know, yeah. we, we, they, they love um, letters in these yeah. acronyms to, to label Wi-Fi, the, the different protocols in Wi-Fi. Uh, wi but the, the thing that's interesting to me is that especially with Wi-Fi 7, and it goes a bit to the, the thing that you just talked about, it's not just about having 40, 50 devices in your home. If you have, you're playing gaming, if you're uh, if doing video conferencing, everybody's mm -hmm. doing video conferencing mm -hmm. today at home. Streaming content, you know, m most people have cut the cord, you mm -hmm. know, and they want to have five or six people watch different movies from different mm -hmm. rooms or different devices. That's where Wi Wi-Fi 7 really kicks in. But to your point, if you've got five people in a household streaming content and there's buffering going on and I can't... Um, you know, consume that content in a very immersive type of way, well, then it becomes a very frustrating experience. Uh, but let's talk about this demo that we're going to talk about, what, what, what the user is going to see here when they watch the video. Sure. So, I was talking about Wi-Fi 7. Uh, there are various ways in which you can implement Wi-Fi 7. Mm -hmm. uh, but, the, but the biggest uh, new technology feature in Wi-Fi 7 is something called a multi-link operation, or MLO for MLO. short. Uh, so, for the first time in Wi-Fi, you can actually have multiple links from a device to the access point at the same time. Mm -hmm. Now, you could use these links in different ways. One simple way to think of it is you can you can combine these links. So, let's say AND, right? I use link 1 and link 2 and possibly AND link 3. So, that's a way in which you use Wi-Fi 7 to increase the data rate. You're combining multiple links, you increase the data rate, reduce the latency and so on. Concatenating them, sure. Yeah. And, and, and that's what all the high-end devices I mentioned earlier, the smartphones and laptops, that, that part of Wi-Fi 7 is what they take advantage of. Mm -hmm. Now, you could also use these links as an or comment. You could use link 1 or link 2 or link 3, which is what is more uh, relevant to the IoT devices. Now, why is that, uh, important. that important? Right now, if, I mean, today if you have a dual band device, which is, I mean, uh, to simplify it, I'll, I'll take a dual band example, but the same applies to a tri band too. If you have a dual band device operating in Wi Fi 6, it's capable of connecting in 2.4 and in 5, but it connects only in one band at a time and it has to pick that band when it makes the connection. Now, let's say you connect in one particular band, let's say 5 gigahertz, and at a later point, you don't like that band. It's congested, there's a lot of other usage happening. You want to switch to, to 2.4, the only way to do that is to disconnect and reconnect. And that process takes anywhere from 5 to 10 seconds, sometimes even longer. Which right? is absolutely unacceptable. Unacceptable really wanna, for user experience. You want a great experience, yeah. right. So now the cool thing about Wi-Fi 7 is you can establish multiple links, the 2.4 and the 5 gigahertz, while you make the connection. So both links are active, and you can dynamically switch between the two depending on what your In an automatic, is. seamless, in the background way. Exactly right. Yeah. It's uh, it's transparent to the to, uh, I mean, to the user. In fact, you can do this switch in as little as half a millisecond. So it's imperceptible to the to the user. That's really, fantastic. Right? So think of it th is as if you're if you're on a freeway, you got two lanes, and one lane has a lot of traffic, and you're stuck behind traffic. If you're a Wi-Fi six car, you can't do anything about it. You're stuck behind traffic. You have to exit the highway and rejoin on a different lane. different lane. Whereas right. in Wi-Fi seven. You can keep hopping, hopping the lane. I mean, oh, that lane is 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 freer now. I can switch lanes that's to the a, those are great other one yeah. and then come back to the to the other lane. So that's what Wi-Fi Seven can do. Mm -hmm. And this simple concept uh, of multi-link is what what we're demonstrating um, here today. Right. So what I have here is two devices. Right. There's a Wi-Fi Six device and there's a Wi-Fi Seven. Uh, Wi-Fi Seven. I mean, Seven devices both connected to a Wi-Fi Seven Router. access point. Right. right. And I'm going to simulate in this demo 
some interference. So I have another another device that can that can that can create interference, something to emulate the 50 uh, 50 that, devices and great. the neighbor devices and so on. And I can create this interference in either 2.4 or or 5 gigahertz. Or 5 gigahertz, right? right. So now my colleague is helping me run this here at the back. If we can get this running. There we go. So what you're seeing here is on the y-axis, we, we, we're measuring the latency. Right. Okay? And the x-axis is the passage of time. So this is the six. This is the Wi-Fi six device. That's the Wi-Fi seven device. Right. As you can see, the latency is under sixty milliseconds most of the times. Under twenty. Okay. This Couple is. Couple spikes, but it's still yeah, a few spikes here and there because there are a lot of other Wi-Fi devices in the in 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 the vicinity. Now, let's create some interference to see what happens when you create some interference on this. So now we're doing this in the two point four gigahertz band. We start some interference. Okay. So this device is now transmitting, creating interference. So it's automatically let's, reconnecting. Yeah, let's look at what's happening here. So this guy is still in 2.4, whereas the Wi-Fi 7 device has switched over to 5 gigahertz now. The latency is much lower Lower in yes. this case. And this guy, if you notice, he's lost connection because there's so much interference. He's lost connection and he's reconnect. He's trying to reconnect. So this, this, I mean, this might take a few seconds to reconnect, whereas the Wi-Fi 7, uh, okay, there we go, it, it, it yes. reconnected now, right. right? And the latency is still high because there's a lot of interference on that channel, whereas our Wi-Fi 7 device, imperceptible, yes. it just switched over to, to a cleaner 5 gigahertz channel and operating smoothly there, right? Now, let's try this the other way around now, right? So, now it's switched to 5, let's create some interference on the on the 5 gigahertz, figure, uh, 5 gigahertz band. There you go. The, the latency went up momentarily because there was congestion. The device detected just, that. Just connected just like that. Switched over, moved to 2.4. And the switch, we also measured the switching time. It's half a millisecond. Right. right? So that's the cool thing about how uh, you could implement Wi-Fi 7, the, the version of Wi-Fi 7 that is more relevant for IoT, right. IoT devices, and, and make for a user experience where no matter which type of environment the device is in, what type of congestion, which situation it's located in, it can dynamically select the right band and make for a make for a better user experience. Right now, this is a simplified version. We're showing this in two bands. The same concept is uh, extensible to three bands as well. You could switch between the three. Yeah, I mean, this is amazing. And and again, a lot of this is inside baseball. the The average consumer doesn't have to wrap their head around um, the technical details, but but the but the but the uh, benefits are enormous, yes. and and the, the reason why, from an IoT standpoint, it's so important. You may have a smart lock. You may have smart sensors on windows, and, and uh, that to de the detect if someone breaks the window to break in. It's really important, frankly, for that connection to be absolutely stable because it, 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 and it may sound silly. Well, if, let's say if the connection breaks and it restores itself ten seconds from then. That may seem, um, you know, a minor trade-off. Not, not really. I mean, you really have to have a consistent, robust connection capability, and this is amazing. Yeah, I mean, Especially if you have an application like a security camera, for instance, yes, the moment when you want a to capture video a video doorbell, a, a video matter. doorbell. I mean, there's there's nothing going on for a long period of time, and then something happens. I mean, these devices are always connected. They're not used all the time, but they need to be always connected. Right. And maybe five or ten times in a day, something interesting happens. Like there's somebody in your backyard you want to capture uh, 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 the video off and upload it to the cloud. Yes. Just when you want to use those devices, those five or ten times you use them in a day, you want them to be connected and you want it to be robustly connected. Right. So those devices serve the intended function, right, that they are they are supposed to be doing. So that's what Wi-Fi. So just to, as we kind of wrap up on this, when do we think that we'll see devices with uh, with this capability? Really broadly, so the, the the certification program, like I mentioned, um, got announced recently by Wi-Fi Seven. Uh, we've announced a product uh, um, which is called uh, it's under our AROC family. It's called ACW Seven Four One X family. So this supports it. So the availability of semiconductors of chips that can exploit this capability is now is now there. So some of our lead customers are beginning to design with this product. So I see in the later part of 2026, the first product. We'll see devices get deployed devices absolutely by the holiday deployed. season uh, later this year. Yeah, That's they'll great. have this capability. And also the Wi-Fi 7 access point. I mean, there's also the infrastructure that needs to get built out. 
Uh, Wi-Fi 7 access points started shipping about a couple of years uh, ago in um, 20, late 24, 25 time frame. This year in 26, Wi-Fi 6 routers are still are still going to outship Wi-Fi 7 routers. But the, but the numbers of Wi-Fi 7 routers that are shipping is growing rapidly. In fact, by late 27, 28, it's going to overtake the number of Wi-Fi 6 routers that are going to be shipped. So there's a big infrastructure getting deployed very quickly. So now these IoT devices can take advantage of that capability now that you have Wi-Fi right. 7 routers out there. Well, sure, Ron, thanks for your time. This is great. I mean, I would put this in the department of a big, big deal. And I think this is going to be very exciting because you're essentially taking Wi-Fi 7, which has been out there for quite some time, and really turbocharging it from a potential standpoint. Because now, from an, I, from an um, a, um, IoT standpoint, it's, it's absolutely, it's, I mean, it's absolutely going to make a big, big difference, I think, with people's overall wireless connectivity experience. Yeah, I think so, too. I believe that strongly. Great. Thanks very much. Hey, for thanks for your time. It. Appreciate it. Thank you. Again, Mark Bina yeah. with Smart Tech Research.